Hey my friend Arthur Moore is here hope all is well in this video we're going to look at the natural logarithmic function uh, with integration so the log rule for integration is as follows let u be a differentiable function of x um, integrating the integrable integration of 1 over x dx is equal to uh, the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c and the integration of or the antiderivative you may hear it called of 1 over u du is equal to the natural log of u plus c. All right so let's look at some integration here. All right so we want to find the indefinite integral of 5 over x dx. Uh, so and the first thing that I would do is to pull this 5 out in front, probably. Let's make this 5 times the integral of 1 over x dx. And we know that the integral of 1 over x dx, if we just go back up here, is equal to the natural log of x plus c. So I don't even have to use the second version yet where we have to use substitution. All right. So the integral of 1 over x dx is simply... simply the natural log of x, natural log of the absolute value of x, plus c. So we have 5 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. All right, number 5, we have one, uh, the integral of 1 over 2x plus 5 dx. Uh, so um, we'll let our u equal 2x plus 5. Therefore, we need our du to equal, uh, or some form of du to equal 1 dx. So if we let u equal 2x plus 5, we know that du is equal to 2 dx, just the derivative of 2x plus 5. If it's 2 dx, but we need 1 dx, we need this right here. So let's divide both sides by 2 or multiply both sides by 1 half. So 1 half of du is equal to 1 dx. All right, so if we write this in terms of u, we have 1 uh, over u. And then uh, the 1 dx is equal to 1 half du, so times 1 half du so we replace 1 dx with 1 half du from there so we can pull the 1 half out in front and then we have the integral of 1 over u du and we know from this lesson that the integral of 1 over u du is equal to the natural log of u plus c natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and then remember, we want to write this in terms of x. So we see that u is equal to 2x plus 5. So that gives us 1 half times the natural log of 2x plus 5 plus c. So we use just a little bit of substitution there. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one here. We have uh, the integral of 9 over 5 minus 4x. And again, if we just look at 5 minus 4x, we know that the derivative of 5 minus 4x is negative 4 uh, dx. So let's pull this 9 out in front of the integration symbol here. Let's make that 1 over 5 minus 4x dx and let's let u equal 5 minus 4x therefore du equals negative 4 dx but again we need 1 dx uh, for, in some form of du so let's multiply both sides by negative 1 fourth And that gives us that 1 dx. All right, so let's write this in terms of u. So we have 9 times the integral of 1 over u, because 5 minus 4x is equal to u. 
uh, and the 1 dx or dx was equal to negative 1 fourth du. Okay. So let's pull the negative 1 fourth out front and multiply it times the 9. So that's negative 9 fourths. Let's integrate 1 over u du. So that gives us the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then last but not least, let's write this in terms of x. So let's replace the u with the 5 minus 4x. All right, number eight. Um, now, number eight, I, when I look at this, I see that if I let u equal 5 minus negative x to the third, then that would give me, I'll almost give me an x squared. So let's let u equal 5 minus x to the third. Then du equals negative 3x squared dx. Okay. Uh, looks like we just need x squared dx, so let's multiply both sides by negative one-third. Therefore, one, negative one-third of du equals x squared dx. All right, so now I can write this integral in terms of u. All right, so uh, let's see here. So let's make it 1 over u, and then let's write the x squared dx in terms of by replacing it with the form of du, so times negative 1 third du. Okay. And let's pull the negative 1 third out. And let's integrate 1 over u du. And then let's write it back in terms of x. So replace the u with 5 minus x to the third. All right, number 20. We have the integral of x to the third minus 4x squared minus 4x plus 20 all over x squared minus 5 and then times that whole fraction times dx. Now, um, if I let u equal x squared minus 5, that will give me 2x, which wouldn't help me in my numerator. If I found the integral of uh, derivative of my numerator, that wouldn't help me with my denominator. So I can't use u du substitution right off the bat here. So if you have one like this, where you have a, a polynomial divided by a binomial here, um, and you can't integrate it, your first, your next uh, option would be to use long division. So let's go through the long division process. So we have x squared, and we have to write in our missing terms. So we don't have an x the first down there. So x squared plus 0x minus 5 going into x to the third minus 4x squared minus 4x plus 20. So we didn't have any missing terms in our dividend numerator there. All right, so long division. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, start over. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, start over. All right, so first thing we always look at is to see uh, we divide the first term on the inside divided by the first term on the outside. And since I have, uh, sorry about that. Since I have three terms on the outside here, I'm going to write that over the 4x, negative 4x. So x to the third divided by x, that's my first step. divided by x squared. It leaves me with x. Okay, so that x goes above this negative 4x. And I put it above the negative 4x because I had three terms, so I just went over to the third term. It really doesn't matter. 
So second step is to take whatever you get up top and multiply it times the um, what's outside. So x squared plus 0x minus 5 using your distributive property. So when I multiply that, that gives me x to the third uh, plus 0x squared uh, minus 5x. All right, and then we have to subtract or change the signs. So step three, I'm going to write it as CS, change the signs of what we just uh, got underneath here. So that will become negative, that will become negative, and that will become positive. So you have to change the signs. All right, let's combine x to the third minus x to the third cancels out. Negative 4x squared minus 0x squared is negative 4x squared. And negative 4x plus 5x is 1x. And then bring down the next term and then start that process over with the negative 4x squared plus 1x plus 20. So um, I'm still dividing by this first term on the outside here. So negative 4x squared divided by x squared. That gives me negative 4. That goes up top. And then multiply. So you have negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times 0x is 0x. And negative 4 times 5 is 20. Now I'll keep the signs. It doesn't matter. It's positive 20. All right. And then after we multiply, change the signs, so that becomes positive, that becomes positive, and that becomes negative. So negative 4x squared plus 4x squared cancels out. 1x plus 0x is 1x, and 20 minus 20 cancels out, so my remainder is x. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite this um, using my quotient and my remain, remainder and let's see what we have so I'm rewriting my initial problem I just divided so I just use the process of division now I'm going to rewrite it with what I have after I divide it so I have x minus 4 and then plus our remainder over our original divisor the remainder always goes over the original divisor okay all of that times dx. So my quotient x minus 4 plus my remainder x over x squared minus 5. Now this is a lot easier to integrate because we can integrate each one of those terms. So the integral of x dx minus uh, the integral of 4 dx plus the integral of x over x squared minus 5 dx. Okay, so the integral of x dx, add 1, divide by the new exponent, so that becomes 1 plus 1 is 2, x squared, divided by 2. The integral of 4 dx, we need to add 1 to the variable, we don't have a variable in there, so we have to make it appear, so that becomes 4x. And then the integral of uh, x over x squared minus 5, well... Let's come out here and let's let u some uh, u du substitution. So let's let u equal x squared minus 5. Therefore, du equals 2x dx, but we needed du just to equal 1x dx. So let's multiply both sides by 1 half. So now 1 half of du equals that 1x dx. So we have 1 over u, and then x dx is equal to 1 half of du. All right, so we need to clean that up. Let's bring the 1 half out in front. Uh, 
integrate 1 over u du, which we know to be the natural log of the absolute value of u. Okay, and then the last step of this would, of course, be to write this u uh, back in terms of x. Okay, so x squared over 2 minus 4x plus 1 half times the natural log of x squared minus 5 plus c. All right, so um, probably you may have to go through that problem a couple of times, but make sure uh, you just practice on that long division. When you can't integrate any other way and you see that there is division there, then you want to go through your long division process and then integrate each term. All right, last but not least, we have uh, the integral of cosecant squared t over cotangent t dt. Uh, so we know that the derivative of cotangent t is equal to negative cosecant t dt. So let's let u equal cotangent t. Therefore, du equals negative cosecant squared t dt. We needed the positive cosecant squared t dt. So let's divide both sides by negative 1. So negative du, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure why that page keeps scrolling. Negative du equals cosecant squared t dt. All right, so let's see. So let's write this as one over u and then cosecant squared t dt is equal to negative du. All right, let's bring the negative out in front. Let's integrate the 1 over u du. And then let's write this back in terms of t. And that's it. All righty, my friend. I hope you found this video to be helpful. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.